Hello, welcome everybody. I'm going to uh, uh, go through a, my image enhancement workflow, which is uh, includes uh, something I like to call the 10 channel workflow. Uh, and I'm going to show you start to finish uh, an, an image enhancement for a, a, a shot here I've got at uh, the Situate Lighthouse in, in uh, Situate, Massachusetts. So we have this nice shot. Um, and this day that I was photographing was kind of a dull gray day, so I did two exposures. I did one exposure like this for the sky, and another exposure, uh, you know, this one was for the sky to bring out as much detail as possible, and this exposure was sort of normal for the foreground area, and I want to combine the two of these. Uh, and, you know, really I'm going to have to do this in Photoshop. But uh, I just want to show you the, the kind of prep work uh, that I did. I've got some snapshots here. So here's a, here's my original. Okay, this is what this looked like. This is the exposure, and you can see it's very dull, but the sky has been exposed down uh, to kind of a medium gray, because I can increase the contrast and really uh, enhance the details in the sky there. This exposure was for the foreground area. You can kind of see here, I'm just going back to my original in the snapshots that I took. So this is the unenhanced original. You can see all zeroed out. And I didn't really do that much. I, I, I did a little bit of sliders, uh, you know, just to kind of uh, put some contrast and a bit of clarity in to bring out some, some of the details in the foreground. And this guy, you know, I haven't really achieved enough detail in the sky and it I, I'd like to get this dark ominous cloudy look out of it so that's what I did this exposure for and my manipulations ended up like this uh, and uh, the only thing I'm I'm gonna do now to help me sort of make uh, uh, the selection that I'm gonna need to make for my sky I want to eliminate the foreground in this one and replace it with this shot so um, just to give me a little head help, you know, a leg up on that, I'm going to, uh, let me just close out this panel, uh, I'm going to blacken out this, this most of this foreground area, uh, and I'm going to use um, a gradient filter to do that. And so I, I'm going to take the exposure all the way down, uh, the contrast all the way down, the clarity all the way down, because I want to eliminate this foreground area, and so I'm going to start right you know kind of below the horizon here and drag click and drag up and I hold down the shift key to constrain it and I just I don't want to go over the edge but right up to that edge and you can kind of see I've mostly eliminated most of the the foreground here okay so I'll close up that but there's one other thing I want to do here and and partly that's because here at 100% I can see that all this contrast that I've added to make the sky more dramatic has added some noise and if I go to my uh, sort of normal exposure uh, you know the foreground exposure doesn't seem to have nearly that much noise so the noise is not going to match between the sky in this shot and the foreground in this shot so what I'm going to do is um, we're going to use the the detail panel here let me just close this up. And in the noise reduction, I want to reduce some of this graininess that's apparent. And I'll start by, I would start with the color noise. It's pretty monochromatic here, so that's not that big a deal. But um, I, always, I, I always try to blur the color noise first. And then I'm going to just come in here and just see how much luminance noise. I don't ever want to remove all of it. And I want to make sure I still have, you know, detail around the edge there. So uh, just, you know, just to take the kind of curse of that graininess off, and uh, that that's enough. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Photoshop and combine this shot with this one. So I'll just shift-click to select both of those. And then we're going to go up here, Photoshop, Edit In open as layers in Photoshop. So this is going to uh, it's going to open both the images into Photoshop in alignment in a layer stack. Okay so here we are in Photoshop and uh, we have these images one on top of the other. 
uh, you can see they're in perfect alignment. It doesn't it, it doesn't actually matter which way you do this, but I'm I'm going to drag the the darker one on top. So I'm just dragging it up to replace the the order. And, uh, this is where I'm going to start working on uh, the image to build a mask that's going to isolate this sky in this layer uh, against the other background. Okay, so here we go. I'll start by making a selection. Um, now I'm going to use the quick select tool here, and we can we can end up selecting all this black area really quickly. Okay, and that that pretty much snapped right to the edge. We can zoom in and see. Uh, so the quick select tool did find uh, the dark edge and snapped right to it. So um, so we're good. So now I just want to what I want to do is invert this mask this selection because when we make the layer mask I want to mask off this area right now this is selected uh, and we just can go up here to selection inverse and now the sky is selected so when I add the layer mask here by clicking on the layer mask icon it will mask out that foreground area and now we have the sky blended on top of this background okay so uh, and this is pretty it's pretty good there's a little bit of a halo going on around this edge so I'm gonna go into my mask properties now and we will just sort of move this over so I can see what's happening with the edge and we're gonna refine the edge so I'll go into mask edge here and we're in the refine edge uh, dialog and I'm, I'm looking to kind of I don't know creep uh, the, the darker sky and the sort of darker horizon into um, the lighter area. So first we'll start by feathering. I'll just give it a little bit of blur and that, that just that by itself helped. And then I can shift the edge. So I'm getting the edge to come a little to creep into that edge and sort of eliminate a little bit of that that lighter halo. Okay, so that's you know, I've got a little chromatic aberration thing going on here with this particular camera that I, I didn't eliminate in Lightroom. Um, but otherwise, the edge is pretty good. There's some areas here, though, where I think the foreground is just too dark uh, when it's right next to the, I mean, too light when it's right next to the sky. So I'm going to I'm gonna now manually work this edge a little bit here. So... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to paint, actually I'm going to paint with white into the layer mask so you can see right now if I solo this this area I want a little more of that darker area to creep over this edge so I'm going to paint with white and uh, you know we'll start by just kind of creeping that in over you know maybe I can get this house to look even a little bit darker. So I'm just going to creep that by painting. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm painting with 20%. So I'm just, you know, graying out this area a bit so that more of the darker uh, part of that layer shows up against the lighter part. So we have the dark layer against the light layer. So I just some kind of working at a, a light opacity just to sort of move across that edge. You can see this area all here looked way too light. So I'm just going to kind of brighten it up, maybe change my opacity a little bit. Kind of working that, some of that darker tone into this area. So we're going to just kind of work this over, darken down those rocks. I don't mind if those if those get really dark. And it's also going to help me, you know, eliminate that kind of odd little halo. Let's 
let's, let's zoom out just a little bit. So here I'm, you know, I'm really kind of blending. If we if we eliminate this this layer mask here, I'm just going to uh, right click on it or control click to disable the layer mask, and I'm just bringing some of this darker area, but there's a little bit of detail left in there. So when I bring it in, it's not going to totally cover up the brighter area. Um, and I'm just kind of using that to darken down just this this background area just a little bit. Let's look at what the mask looks like. So you can kind of see, you know, I'm really feathering that darkness into this foreground area right right over the area uh, where I want it to have some of that darkness. So I'm kind of trying to get this ominous sky playing against uh, the, the, the brighter foreground. And now uh, now let's go into uh, what I like to call my 10 channel workflow. So the first thing I'm, I, I've, I think I've got a reasonably successful blend here. Um, a bit brighter in the foreground perhaps, but uh, it's giving it that sort of dramatic contrast that I'm looking for. But let's see uh, if I can enhance this even further. And uh, I always like to look at the individual grayscale channels here to kind of decide if there is an individual channel that maybe has a little more contrast in it. Um, and I've got, you know, I've got the red channel probably looks really good for the sky. You know, the green channel is a little brighter, a little brighter overall in the sky. Uh, some kind of changes the darkness relationships in there. The blue channel, interestingly enough, is got um, it's got darker rocks. It's not quite as nice in the sky. So there's a lot of more detail in the sky in the red channel. Uh, the, the the green channel actually, even though this area this area in the middle here gets pretty bright, I'm, I, I may like I may want to brighten up that the sky a bit. So I may want to use the green channel in the sky area and the blue channel in the foreground area to just kind of enhance the contrast. You can see the 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 difference in brightness on the on the rocks. You know, so they want to darken those down. Um, so let's let's see what we can do here. So I, I need to get two channels into layers above uh, my composite image here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll add an empty layer. And I'm going to use image apply image to grab the uh, we'll grab the blue channel first. Okay, the blending here doesn't matter because this area is empty, so this could be anything. But basically, it's like adding that that uh, blue channel as a grayscale layer, and it just puts it into that layer here. Okay, so we put the blue channel in, and if I change the uh, uh, the apply mode from normal to luminosity you can kind of see and you know, looking into the foreground area it's it's brightened up the sky I lost a little bit of detail but it, look how it's darkened down down the rocks nicely um, I mean I kind of like the what I'm seeing detail wise down here but I do like the way the the rocks have gotten darker and this area has gotten a little bit lighter so I'm getting a little bit of kind of enhanced uh, contrast. You see how it's darkened the the seaweed there a little bit, I, I, and I like that. So I'm I'm going to use this area just in the foreground. So we'll put a layer mask there, and um, I'm going to get the gradient tool and mask paint with black into this layer mask uh, from the the horizon area. Let's say like from let's just put it about here. And I'm just gonna drag down. I'm holding the shift key to get this to be perfectly horizontal. 
and you can kind of see I've I've just now masked it off so that if we look at the layer mask I've just taken the sky and masked it off so I'm only using this layer in the foreground and I'm going to bring back some of the detail here in these um, in these rocks with a nice soft brush and we're going to just paint with black into the mask there to reveal do it at 100 percent reveal a little more of that detail from there okay so now I've got kind of an interesting you know foreground midground getting into the background uh, leading us up to that lighthouse now I wanted to use uh, either the red or I think maybe we'll use the green in, in the sky because I think that gives us some interesting detail in the sky so we'll make another layer there and um, I'm going to reach down now with apply image and get the green channel and let's see what that does when I add that green channel in there luminosity it's brightening the highlights in the sky just a little bit maybe adding just a little bit of contrast um, but I'm gonna I want to mask off the foreground area because I don't I don't it it's brightening the rocks just a little bit um, so let's let's mask off the foreground area so I do I'm doing the opposite here I make a layer mask and this time I'm gonna drag up from the from uh, the foreground area across that horizon just a little bit and you know so now I'm just affecting that um, let's just see if I duplicate this layer and then change uh, from luminosity to say soft light yeah that makes a, a really dramatic change okay and uh, you know perhaps maybe that's a bit much maybe we'll just reduce that just a little bit there and maybe I will also now mask it off of this this area in here um, or at least at least a little bit of that foreground area so we'll get a, a brush here and I want to brush with black to mask off this darkening effect off the the, the house here oops I didn't want to do that I want to do it on the layer mask right Just kind of blend it a little bit. <laughs> so I want to get. I don't want that area to get too dark. And now my my lighthouse here is also getting a little dark. So uh, just like that. Okay. All right, so you know, I'm really I'm going for enhanced contrast here, and now uh, now maybe we we could we can pump up the color. Now, you know, this is I'm I think I might end up going for a black and white in this image, but in order to get uh, the kind of contrast control that I'd like to have, uh, I'm gonna I want to pump up the color, so I've got something to work with in my black and white conversion. So right now the color is very muted and we're almost at black and white. But there's some interesting things I could probably bring out some interesting details here if I had more color to work with. So uh, now that I've kind of enhanced the contrast as, as much as I, I think I should, uh, I'm going to now duplicate this image and we'll merge the layers for our duplicate. And this duplicate is going to be an LAB. We're going to convert it into LAB because I'm going to use LAB to really enhance the color. Okay, so we're going to go over here, Image, Mode, Convert to LAB. And um, I'm just going to start by putting a, a Curves Adjustment layer on. 
and uh, before I do anything else I'm going to change the apply mode for this curve layer to overlay. Now overlay creates a lot of contrast I'm not actually looking for luminance contrast um, I want to take the lightness channel out of the equation altogether. Um, so what I'm going to do is use a blend. I'm going to go to advanced blend mode. So over here from the upper right corner of the layers panel I'm going to go to blending options. And blending options, now that we're in LAB what's interesting is I can uncheck the luminance channel from the blend and so therefore this uh, overlay calculation is making um, the contrast appear, let me just close this, making the contrast appear only in the A and the B channels. So we see the A and the B channels don't have a lot of contrast except in the B channel, the B channel because there's some blue and some yellow in this image. There's a little bit of enhanced red in the image here. The lighter areas are more red. So when we add that contrast from that curve, see what that does is it's adding contrast into the A and the B channels and that's what's giving us the look of the additional uh, color right here. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting a, a more color in everywhere in the sky and in the in this area here let's let's kind of zoom in I'm, I'm thinking that I I might want to actually even bring out some more of that more of the red color in here uh, so I can go to my curve and the reds gonna be in the A channel anything brighter than middle gray is gonna be more red and anything darker than this sort of midline here will be more green so let's see, maybe we can go a little more green and a little more red. So I'll just add a little more contrast. And you know, with LAB, and especially now that we're doing this calculation as, a, as an overlay blend, little moves have a big effect. Look how much, how much more color I'm getting in that area. So I'm just steepening the curve a little bit at a time here and then trying to decide, you know, just kind of about how much I'd like that the green and the red to come out in this in this uh, this enhanced color version. So you can kind of see pushing it. You can really put. You can kind of see now here. There's a there's a layer of green in the image that wasn't apparent. It was there very subtly, but we had so little color in it. To get this much color out of this image. You, you just can't do it without damaging the image in Lightroom just by using a you know saturation enhancement but in LAB because of the nature of the channel structure we have we can add a whole lot more color into this and uh, you know this is looking pretty good um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to this version and uh, and then I'm going to make another version where I take out that some of that color from the sky because I think this is this is just a bit much. Um, but actually, let's let's put this color back into our master file, which has all the layers. So I'm going to um, let's see here. Let's um, I can I can save. I'm going to I'm going to flatten this image. and I can always undo that step and get my curve back but I'm gonna drag this on top of my RGB document and this is the color, kind of color enhanced version I'm gonna drag it up to the tab here to put it on top of my original document which is over here right so we start here I get the move tool I hold down the shift key and click in the window here and drag up to the tab now the tab comes forward I still have the shift key held down. I drag down and let go with my mouse finger and keep the shift key held down and it drops this color version right on top. Now I'm gonna just change the mode here from normal to color because if I I can use this enhanced color and then still change the contrast underneath it if I want. But I don't want such so much color in the sky. I think it uh, looks a little uh, 
uh, you know, it's just too blue up there. I'd rather it have that gray look, which seems to me to be a little more realistic. And maybe I'll blend out some of this, you know, some of this green is, is maybe a bit much over here, this area right here, and the rest of that doesn't need so much color either. Uh, we'll see, you know, but let's, uh, let's blend out the sky with a layer mask. So I'll make a layer mask here. I'm going to blend out the color in the sky. So I'm going to paint a gradient with black. And I usually go black to transparent. It could go black to white. It's a simple mask here. So we're going to blend this out. And I'll start right here. Hold down the shift key and blend it out like that. Okay, so now really I only have this enhanced color in the foreground area. Okay, so uh, you know, so far uh, we've we've really kind of enhanced this image. I'm actually kind of liking all this additional color here, but let's uh, let's see also now um, what can happen uh, if I convert this into black and white and um, so let's look at the channels. I've got a, a sort of enhanced color and uh, that's going to mean there's going to be more difference in the channel. So here's the red channel. You know, light rocks, the rocks are kind of merging a bit with the uh, you know, with the with the other uh, elements, the water. Certainly there's not as much separation in the rocks. The the seaweed looks okay. Well, let's see here. Okay, green channel, again, we're a little darker uh, in the rocks, um, a little lighter in the seaweed, just a little bit, but very imperceptibly. And blue, blue has the darkest contrast in these rocks, which I, in a black and white, I can kind of see, you know, my, my sky looks really good in the red channel. Uh, my foreground area looks really good in the blue channel. Okay. So we have a, a pretty reasonable color version here, okay? Um, but if I'm going to make a black and white, I want even more contrast. So even though I did that before, I, I, I added these black and white channels before to enhance the contrast, right now I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to convert the image into black and white using the channels, and we're going to blend the channels together. So um, we, can, uh, we can do that with... Um, with the same approach I'll make an empty layer okay and then I'm gonna do image apply image and we'll find our red channel for the sky okay and we'll mask that off the foreground actually we don't we don't even we can actually leave that like that because we're going to blend from the other channel. So um, now let's add another empty layer. So that one's going to be my red channel. Just so I keep track of this. I add another empty layer and I'm going to turn this off because I want to get the channel from the color image, not, not this sort of already converted black and white. So we're going to target this channel and this is going to be our blue. Okay. And I'll do image, apply image. I'll get the blue channel, which now has the darker rocks. Okay. All right. So I have the blue channel. And we'll turn on the red channel. You can see that the red channel looks better in the sky. And but pretty much all everything from here down I want to be from the blue channel okay so we'll put a layer mask in there and I'm gonna mask off the upper half of this um, we'll, we'll kinda of start here so we'll make a little bit more of a blend so I, where I click first will be black in the mask and where I let go it'll it'll be white so you can kinda of see I've put that gradient in there and so now we have the the blue see how much contrast that's added so when I'm not when I'm not dealing with the color I just want I want contrast and separation and I want to see these as a uh, you know kind of darker and it's also given me a kind of lighter milky white 
sort of frothy ocean uh, here. Um, let's see. I think I might like to bring in a little bit of detail here from from the foreground again, because uh, it seems so much better in the red channel. This this area down in here. So uh, we'll mask it off with a brush, and I, I, I'm not going to sort of hammer it all at once at 100%. Also, put it at 30% opacity, and just sort of brush it in just to get a little more. I don't mind that foreground area getting darker. It it, it it I, I like it to transition from the darker edge here and get a little bit lighter and then up here it's nice and dramatically white okay so here's uh, here's my black and white I, I, I if I wanted a neutral black and white um, I would leave it like this I'm going to however I'm going to add uh, a little uh, colorizing toning effect so I'm gonna I do that um, uh, using a hue saturation layer. I, I, I like to do it that way. So we'll create a hue saturation layer and colorize. And you see now it's sort of red. There's the red hue. You can make it any color you want, but uh, much less saturation. We just want to give a little sort of selenium-like look to it. Okay, so I've got that. I can now uh, use that for my color you know, variation. Uh, if it se still seems too colorful, we can change the opacity. I'm going to now, uh, I like to oftentimes do sort of a split tone effect. So uh, I'm going to add another hue saturation adjustment will colorize it but this time I'm gonna to go to kind of a a blue color and reduce the saturation just a little bit but I want this to split so I want the highlights to have this cool color and the shadows to have the warm color so I'm gonna go into my blending options here and we're gonna create a split where the darker parts in this layer, I'm going to see through them. So I want to blend through the darker parts. So I'm moving this black triangle, and you can kind of see now the warmer areas coming in, right? Uh, but right now the transition is very harsh. So the trick to getting a nice smooth transition there is to hold down the Option or Alt key and then split this little triangle apart. So uh, if I click and drag I can get that triangle to be smoother that the transition you can see how nice and smooth it is now so I'm transitioning and you know right now I have sort of a split tone effect where the highlights get this cool color and it also tends to give it an, an enhanced contrast so what I typically do is I, I'll select both of these hue saturation layers and put that into a group so I go to my layer options flyaway here and say new group from layers and this is going to be toning okay and we leave the mode at pass through and now I can treat that whole uh, split tone treatment as one effect that I can reduce can reduce the contra uh, you know the, the the opacity and thus the strength of that so it's not you know just I think a little bit goes a long way to make it look just a little more dimensional without it looking you know too altered it's definitely still looks like a black and white uh, just a little bit I think I like now I'll add I'll select all of my black and white so I've got all the toning and the two black and white layers and I'm gonna make that into a new group and we'll call this you know black and white Okay, so there's my black and white. Now I just turn that off, and there's my color. So I have two versions of this image. I, I actually kind of like the black and white version better, uh, but I, I didn't get here until going through that whole process of enhancing the color uh, and the contrast and kind of working my way towards this. Okay, so let's now look at what my originals looked like in Lightroom. So we had this one, and we had this one, 
and my my new version is this so you can kind of see how far uh, you can go to to really create an enhanced version uh, from two different exposures.